Hello there. I thought I'd take a moment to talk, talk to you about this. Uh, I'm a little late to the party, as they say. The uh, Spark Go. It's a very nifty little box. It was on sale for $99. I bought it just recently, and the intention was to use it as a interface for my iPad because I have uh, Positive Grids Bias FX2 loaded on my iPads, and I like to use those. So I thought this would be a handy way to have a little device that I could use both as a um, interface and I could take it with me if I feel like it and use it with the software that's included, uh, which is kind of defeats the purpose because <laughs> I could have, uh, uh, what should we call it, uh, uh, Bias FX2 on the, so on the, on the uh, device itself. But I could take this with the four settings and use it. The point being, for $99, if I could have gotten a decent um, interface, that's not a bad deal, you know? So I thought, well, the, all the rest of it is just an, an addition. It's, 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 a, it's a bonus, as it were. But here's the thing. Apparently not many people are interested in this, and I can I guess I can understand why, because it's kind of an odd thing to want to do, I guess. Uh, if, you, if you do intend to do that, and I have done most of this... Uh, experimentation for you there's a terrible latency uh, unusable latency uh, in a best case scenario and on top of that it's flaky it kind of doesn't want to it doesn't want to talk to the ipad uh, it's not probably not class compliant is what i'm guessing uh, and i had a lot of trouble finding this out before i bought it uh, i used chat gpt and watched a bunch of uh, videos about this but nobody seemed interested in this particular aspect because you can use it with a computer. I didn't try it because I don't really care. I don't want to use it for that. I have nicer units to use at home. Um, but everything I checked said, yeah, you can use this. You can use this as an interface. And so <laughs> I went ahead and bought it. Uh, so uh, if you're interested in that, um, I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, you can use it. Definitely use it with your computer, or I don't know, definitely, I didn't try it out, but but most of the consensus is with the uh, ASIO for all driver, it works fine. It's 44.1, 16-bit, which is nothing to write home about, but I was willing to have that as good enough, uh, except it doesn't work with the, my intended case. Um, you can't change the, uh, the order of the effects, and you cannot add more. So that's something to, like, I don't know how many people really tell you that, uh, it's not a deal breaker, but I mean, it's nice to know because if you do use bias effects uh, software elsewhere, you know that they're fully move, fully movable and you can have as many as your system will tolerate. Whereas this is just, I think, what is it, four on each side, three or four on each side, and they are predetermined. So you can't have like two modulation devices or two delay devices or anything like that. But all that said, I can verify that it sounds great. I mean, it's it's the bias effects software. It it uh, the modeling is is to me it's among the best for that kind of thing. I know I'm not not I guess I'm not much of a snob as that goes, but works for me. I've I've I have uh, I have gone through several hardware devices and I always send them back. I never never am satisfied with them. Uh, I always go back to Positive Grids Bias Effects Two on my iPad, in particular because I like the the portability and I think it's just a lot of fun. And you have so much control, and you have the uh, you have the the uh, software to create a, a a pedal or to modify a pedal. You have uh, the amp designer, plus you have the uh, the you know the bias effects to itself. And to me, it's just a it's just a winner all the way around. But anyway, I wouldn't recommend this if you're trying to think if you're thinking you want to use it for uh, interfacing with uh, an iOS device. Whether it works with uh, Android, I couldn't tell you. I have all Apple shit, so it doesn't work with that. I mean, it's a tremendous latency. I don't know who would want to use it. It's probably, I don't know, 100 milliseconds or more. You know, it just sounds, it just is no good. And I couldn't get rid of it. Plus, the uh, when you try to change the uh, buffer sizes, I'm using Positive Grid's own, own software. It doesn't immediately recognize your buffer size changes. Sometimes you got to unhook it and hook it back up and hook it in and anything. Anyway, so uh, bottom line here is uh, don't use it. 
or I wouldn't recommend it for uh, an I iOS interface. I do not think it's class compliant. And that's it. <laughs>